Hi, my name is Dr. Jay Desai, and I welcome you all to this sixth video on non-destructive testing. Today, I will be talking on radiography. This radiography testing is based on X-rays. What we do here is we have an X-ray tube or an X-ray source, and the X-rays are generated from this X-ray source or an X-ray tube. These X-rays are made to fall on a specimen, and the returning X-rays are made to fall on an X-ray film or a radiographic film. And the contrast in the X-ray film or a radiographic film will tell us whether there are any cracks, pores, channels, holes, or any other kind of inhomogeneity present in a material or not. The X-rays in electromagnetic spectrum. So here you see the visible light is uh, has a wavelength of 10 to minus 6 meter and X-rays have a wavelength of 10 to minus 10 meters. So the wavelength of X-rays is much lower than the visible light. And that is why they have a much higher energy. And since they have a much higher energy, they are much more powerful and they can penetrate deeper inside the specimen. And that is why X-rays are used in radiography. How are X-rays generated? X-rays are generated when high-speed electrons are suddenly made to stop on a target. And what happens here is the kinetic energy of electrons is converted to heat energy and X-rays. So what do we need to generate X-rays? We need two things. First is electron generating source, which is made up of material which can emit electron easily like tungsten filament. And second is the target. The target should be such that it should be able to stop the electrons and it should have a very high melting point because it has to withstand a lot of heat which is generated. And that is why the target is made up of a refractory metal like molybdenum. How to generate X-rays? So what happens is we have a tungsten filament which is the cathode and here electrons are generated by providing bias and we maintain a high voltage difference between cathode and anode which is our molybdenum target. And since there is a high voltage difference, the electrons will accelerate towards the anode and they will strike the molybdenum target and it will generate heat and X-rays. And this is how X-rays are generated. It is very essential that molybdenum target should be water cooled so that it does not degrade in the whole process. Now, the second uh, important thing in radiography is radiographic film. This radiographic film is used to capture image. So it, it has to be made up of material which can darken when we expose it to a certain amount of radiation. So the material should darken on exposure of radiation. And that is why this radiographic film is made up of silver halide emulsions. So what happens is when the silver halide emulsions interact with X-rays, the bond between silver and halide ions is broken and silver ions are liberated. And we get the darkening of film. And this darkening will depend on the energy of X-rays. Higher energy of returning X-rays, more darkening. Lesser energy of returning X-rays, less darkening. Now, what is the basis for radiographic testing? The basis for radiographic testing is how much intensity of X-rays is coming out and how do we calculate that intensity? So we calculate that intensity by using this formula I equals to I naught, which is the initial intensity of X-rays, E minus mu, which is the linear absorption coefficient, which determines the extent of absorption and is different for different material. So I equals to I naught E minus mu, and X is the thickness of the material which the X-rays are passing through. And this is how we determine the intensity of the final X-rays which are coming out of the specimen. Now, how does X-rays interact with matter? X-rays can interact with matter by five possible mechanisms. First is photoelectric scattering, second is Compton scattering, third is pair production, fourth is Rayleigh scattering, and fifth is photo disintegration. 
in photoelectric scattering what happens is x rays will eject the electrons and it will lose the energy so this e naught which is the initial intensity of x rays is uh, imparted to electrons so this is the phi naught which is work function and also the extra energy will be given as a form of kinetic energy to the electrons so this is the mechanism of photoelectric scattering the x rays can also interact with matter with the help of compton scattering here what happens is x rays will first eject an electron it will lose energy and this lower energy x rays will further be scattered by another electron and that is called compton scattering the third way is pair production where x rays eject a pair of an electron and an positron these three methods are very important in radiography the fourth one is Rayleigh scattering, which is elastic scattering, here X rays does not interact with material. It only passes through the material without losing uh, any energy, and that is why it is not very relevant in radiography. The fifth one is photo disintegration. If the X rays have very high energy, then there are chances that it may interact with the nucleus and it can eject the particles from nucleus, which is called nucleons. Again, this particular process is not very relevant as compared to in uh, contact with radiography. Now, what are the parameters that affect the image formation? So, two parameters are there which affect the image formation. One is the X-ray source. We want the X-ray source to be as small as possible, but also we want to prevent excess heating, which may be there if we reduce the spot size. And the second important parameter that affect the image formation is radiographic field. So what should be the characteristics of radiographic film? A characteristics of radiographic film is defined by four major parameters. One is photographic density, second is radiographic contrast, third is film characteristic curve, and the fourth is film gradient. And also we can increase the efficiency of radiographic film by using intensifying screens, which I will discuss later. The photographic density is the first uh, characteristic of a radiographic film, which is the log V0 by Bt, where V0 is the intensity of incident X-rays and Bt is the in uh, intensity of transmitted light through completely darkened and, trans uh, and developed film. So D equals to 1, it means 10% transmission is done. And if D equals to 2, then only 1% of X-rays have actually transmitted from the specimen. So that is what we mean by photographic density. The second important parameter is radiographic contrast, which is the difference in densities of two regions. So suppose D1 is the density of one region and D2 is the density of another region. Then what is the difference between two? It is called radiographic contrast. The third is film characteristic curve. Film characteristic curve is the graph between density and log rate of exposure. Usually, there are two kinds of graphs which are usually observed. One is S-shaped curves and one is J-shaped curves. And this will tell us about uh, how much is the exposure. And exposure is I, which is intensity, and T, which is exposure time. And the fourth parameter is film gradient, which is a... Uh, D1 minus D2 by E1 minus E2. So these are four parameters which are very important and which determines the characteristic of a radiographic film. So what do we need for radiography? We need a high film gradient. We want the photographic density to be between 0.25 to 2. We want the contrast to be 0.2 or more. And we want graininess to be fine. Now, what is graininess? So, graininess is that the silver halide particles which are present in the radiographic film should not form clusters or white patches. Because if it forms clusters, it will lead to blurring of image which will not be good for our testing. And that is why the graininess should be very fine. And these are the five, these are the four things which we really need for radiography so that we can achieve or we can obtain the maximum results or the optimum results. Now, another thing which we can add in the radiography testing is intensifying screens. 
which are usually made up of thin metal screens like uh, with a low work function like LED. This intensifying screen serves two purposes. First is to improve the quality of image by filtering out the scattered radiation. Why we need to filter the scattered radiation? We need to filter the scattered radiation because it has a very lower intensity than X-rays. And since it has a very lower intensity, it will, it will lead to hazing of image and will affect the image quality adversely. So that is why we do not want the scattered radiation. And the intensifying screens will help us in filtering out this scattered radiation. The another objective of intensifying screen is it provides the additional exposure and this additional exposure will lead to better uh, or better images or image quality enhancement. So there are two purposes of intensifying screens. First is to improve the quality of image by filtering the scattered radiation. And the second is to provide additional exposure for image quality enhancement. Now, how to check whether the image which we have obtained is good or not? So there are certain indicators which are called as image quality indicators. And this helps us to check the quality and validity of the radiographic image. And certain examples are ASTM play card or hole type penetrometer and wire type penetrometer. So these uh, penetrometers are used to check the image quality and to ensure that the image which we have received is of good quality or not. Now, what about the exposure time? So the exposure time will depend on material and thickness. And uh, we can calculate the exposure time with the help of calibration charts. Now, these calibration charts are supplied by manufacturers. And these calibration charts are different for uh, different sample thicknesses. And uh, the manufacturers manufacturer provides the calibration charts over the entire tube voltages. This is how the calibration charts essentially looks like. This is the exposure, which is I into T. And this is the steel thickness. This is for the steel specimen. We can also go for another material. So these are the different voltages. And uh, with this, we can figure out that, okay, we have a thickness of this much, then this much exposure will be required. And we know the tube current. So we can figure out how much time we need to expose our film to the X-rays. So with the help of calibration charts, we can actually decide the time which uh, we can uh, impose the X-rays on our specimen and on the film. And we get the optimum image using less resources. So to sum up, we talked about uh, radiography, the introduction and basic principle. Then we talked about X-rays in electromagnetic spectrum, how are X-rays generated, that is using electron generating source and target. Then we talked about radiographic film, uh, the basis for radiographic testing, how X-rays are interacting with matter, uh, parameters that affect image formation, characteristics of a radiographic film, intensifying screens, image quality, how do we check the image quality? And finally, we talked about the calibration charts to calculate the exposure and exposure time. Thank you. And these are my references. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.